In just 50 years, Qatar has gone from a poor fishing country to an oil giant with the highest per capita gross domestic product in the world, roughly at $80,000 to $100,000. And even that's kind of an underestimate to the real wealth of the citizens of Qatar. And the citizens are about 300,000 of them with an average income of well over $400,000. Qatar sits on the world's third largest natural gas reserves, which contributes largely to its wealth. Me, I don't know, I think I want to have a million dollars a day, $365 million a year. Yeah, that's, uh, what would that look like anyways? Is that too much money? I don't know if there's anything called too much money. Whatever, Bill Gates has billions of dollars. But yeah, I'd love to hear how much money you wanna make. Now, there's quite a bit of you guys that requested for us to do a video on Qatar. And so I wanna thank everybody that requested Qatar. This was so fascinating. I learned a ton when I was doing research about this. Qatar has been ruled by the Al Thani family since the early 1900s when it was controlled by the British. On July 17, 1913, Sheikh Abdullah bin Qasim Al Thani became the ruler of Qatar. At the time, Qatar's primary industry was pearling and fishing. The country at the time was dealing with widespread poverty, malnutrition, and disease from the collapse of the pearl trade in the 1920s. In 1939, oil was discovered in the city of Dukan, but development on the field was slow until 1949 because of World War II. While the oil discovery was great, it was nothing compared to the natural gas reserve found 30 years later. In 1951, Qatar produced 46,500 barrels of oil a day, amounting to $4.2 million in revenue. The discovery of offshore oil fields led to an increase in production to 230,000 barrels per day. Then, Qatar began a slow modernization process. The country's first school, hospital, and power plant, and even telephone exchange all opened in the 1950s. Oil revenue steadily increased through the 1960s as the Al Thani family grew stronger by placing relatives in high government positions. However, oil production is not expected to remain at its peak levels of 500,000 barrels a day because of the oil fields are projected to be mostly depleted by the year 2023. But Qatar has natural gas reserves to compensate for that. Qatar's reserves of gas are the third largest in the world. Qatar's reserves are estimated to be at 896 trillion cubic feet. In the year 1971, the world's largest natural gas field, the South Pars North Dome Gas Condensate Field, was discovered off the coast of Qatar. But the crash of the oil prices in the 1980s stopped the growth of the economy. By the year 1995, the situation in Qatar had not improved until Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani took power in a coup and then Qatar became a very powerful force. Hamad saw that keeping a low profile could be dangerous and set a whole new direction for the country. So how exactly did Hamad raise Qatar's profile in the world? What he ended up doing was pretty big. So first, he let the U.S. set up its regional military headquarters, the al Udid Air Base, outside the capital city of Doha. The partnership with the U.S. military has given Qatar a new level of security. Hamad then went on to integrate Qatar into the global economy. He built the world's largest facilities for condensing liquid natural gas and began exporting liquid natural gas for the first time. Following that, over the past 15 years, 14 liquid natural gas plants have been built in partnership with international oil companies. In the late 1990s, Qatar entered in production sharing agreements with several international oil companies. And in 1996, for those of you who keep up to date with anything to do with the news, well, you probably know about this. Hamad launched Al Jazeera, which is a 24-hour news station that combined aggressive reporting, high production value, as well as an Islamic worldview. Al Jazeera became huge, and the purpose of this organization was really about enhancing Qatar's visibility as well as its influence, but the channel has gone on to be one of the most important broadcasters in the whole Arab world when it comes to news. Qatar's GDP has skyrocketed over the past 15 years thanks to steady oil production and high natural gas production. 
in regards to planning for the future depletion of its oil, well, Qatar has taken measures to diversify its economy. In the year 1998, the government built Education City, which is a huge campus that supports six American and two European universities, as well as research centers. Qatar has a sovereign wealth fund of $170 billion. Then in the year 2005, Qatar established the Qatar Investment Authority to recycle oil and gas income into other income streams. In other words, it was set up to buy a lot of things around the world and thus reduces the country's exposure to the oil price. In London alone, it owns Harrods, the Shard, the Chelsea Barracks site, the U.S. Embassy and the Olympic Village site, among many others. It is also the largest shareholder in Sainsbury, which is just over a quarter of the business. And check this, guys. It also co-owns Miramax Films after purchasing it from Disney with a group of other investors. The Qatar Financial Center was built in 2005 to develop Qatar's financial services industry. The country believes it can become a financial services leader for the Gulf states thanks to its relative stability and large base of capital. In 2006, Qatar passed Indonesia to become the largest exporter of liquid natural gases in the world, with revenues from oil and natural gas amounting to 60% of Qatar's GDP. But more competition was coming, with liquid natural gas production booming in places like the United States as well as Australia. And then in December of 2010, Qatar was selected as host of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. And because of that, Qatar promised to build 12 state-of-the-art stadiums that would employ cooling technology so players could escape the heat. Qatar has positioned itself as a sporting hub for the region, hosting or planning to host numerous global sporting events. And last June, it was alleged that Qatar spent $5 million on bribes to secure the 2022 World Cup bid. Switzerland is now opening an investigation into mismanagement and money laundering related to Qatar's bid. So there's still quite a bit of controversy going on there, but hey, Qatar has really set itself up powerfully to be a powerhouse nation in the world. Now before I wrap up our playlist of recommended videos, that's below in the video description. I highly recommend it, hence the phrase recommended videos. You'll learn a lot more. So yeah, keep on learning on FTD Facts. You can keep up to date with everything I'm doing when I'm not filming these FTD Facts episodes and more. In closing now, several reports state that Qatar is the wealthiest country in the world when we look at its GDP per capita. The country developed itself based on natural gas, oil and diverse investments around the world. There are many countries in the world which have fossil fuels, but few have done as well as Qatar to take advantage of them. In fact, countries like Venezuela, Iraq, Libya and Nigeria became victims to the resource curse, which is when an abundance of resources leads to less economic economic growth and limited development. The support of the United States as well as decades of stored reserves have also helped to stabilize the growth and development of the country, making it now the richest country in the world.